What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Curtis Anderson and myself have been continuing to examine 100 years of the greatest 150 black fighters of all times. Now, boxing would begin to be recognized in 1681. And since that time, many men have made accomplishments taking on all fighters of the world. But the two fighters out of America happen to be black men. They were Bill Richmond and Tom Molyneux. Now, since then, many black fighters have came and gone, but they have yet to be recognized, yet appreciation have been given to them for what they have contributed to this game called boxing. But on this series, we will be recognizing them. George Brown, better known as Young Molyneux, was based out of Chicago, Illinois. 1854, December 15th to be exact, he would take on a young man by the name of Tom Davis in Boston, Massachusetts. It would be a draw, and he would earn $60 for that bout. We're talking 1854. Now, in 1857, May 30th, he would take on John Mackey, Chicago, Illinois. It would be a three-round exhibition. June 10th of 1857, he would take on Young Sambo, Chicago, Illinois. And that would also become recognized as a three-round exhibition. September 5th, 1857, George Brown would take on Richard Plum. Chicago, Illinois. He would earn $50 for that bout. But this bout would be different. He would defeat him in 11 rounds. Took 20 minutes to complete. It was a bloody mess. And Richard Plum had lost an arm in that fight. 1858, July 26. George Brown would take on John Powers, Chicago, Illinois. That would also be a three round exhibition. But when he took on Annie Foster, 1859, July 4th, fought him in Cleveland, Ohio. His purse was $50. And his fight would go 45 rounds. Take him 33 minutes to complete. And he talked about brutal contests. That was a brutal contest. You see, George Brown would snap his wrist. He would be eye gouged. He would fracture his knee. But he would continue. Andy Foster could take no more. It was a brutal contest. February 6, 1860. We take on Andy Forster once again. Fought him in Cleveland, Ohio. And he would win on a foul, 33 rounds. His purse was $25. May 14th of 1860. We would take on John Mackey, Cleveland, Ohio. Three round exhibition. But in 1861, July 24, he would take on Ed Headley, New York, and he would defeat him in 23 rounds, 51 minutes to complete. Another brutal contest. See, during those years, you can pick a man up and you can slam him down. You couldn't choke him and you couldn't eye gouge him, but you couldn't knee him to the groin. And the battering these men would suffer with the amount of money that they would accept was something else. But these were men who took on their foe. They needed to be recognized. Fighters such as Sambo Sutton, they called him the Grosquito. Fought from 1839 to 1848. 
He was a very good fighter. He was fighting England. Well, they had most of the competitions during that time. Yes, he took some dives, as he was programmed to do. But when the fight was on the up and up, there was no contest. He was a very good competitor, very strong. And he didn't care about his opponent. Didn't care about him because of what he's gone through. What he's witnessed. And his family. They had to pick cotton and tobacco leaves for many hours of a day. So when he got a chance to, to fight another man, he made it count. He had fighters such as Chains Black. For in 1843, May 20th to be exact. Being there with a man by the name of Hurley Liverpool, he would earn 10 pounds for that fight. Yes, he would win that fight, but he would lose the next fight in 30 rounds, 45 minutes. It would be against Bill Butler. But it was contests like that that would give opportunities to black fighters of the past. It was better than working on the fields, most would say. And they somewhat enjoyed it. Give them an opportunity to take out their frustrations. Because they were not equally treated. But they were fighters. They meant well. And he took care of business. In that square circle. Other men such as George Crowhurst. He was simply known as the Black. For 1854, April 10th to be exact, be in a ring with Jim Melvile in Massachusetts. When he took him on in Manchester, it went 65 rounds, 90 minutes to complete. His purse was 10 pounds. He had another fighter by the name of Daniel the Black. 1822. October 7th, he would take on George Krauss in Haybridge, and his purse was 40 pounds. Yeah, many men would have those experiences. Dotson Holder, he was known as the N-word. For 1848, February 12th, Butler Hodge, in Hill, Birmingham. His purse was 20 pounds. And that fight went 20, 50 rounds, 90 minutes to complete. The Black Evans and Edward Green, all great fighters of the past. You had Bob Smith, the Liverpool darkie. from 1863 to 1866. You have fighters by the name of Edward C. Rollins, who was known as the Old Starlight. Professor Charles Hadley of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Had many fighters who we just don't know about, but they made contributions of their day. Men such as Johnny Banks, the Darky Wizard, fought from 1878 to 1885. He was a colored champion. George Godfrey, Old Chocolate. Yes, we talked about him. This bout that took 19 rounds to complete. He was in a ring with the Black Prince, Peter Jackson. Oh, what a fight that was. You also had Tom Molino, the terrible black. Had an opportunity with Tom Cribb. 1810. What a robbery that was. Fight went 33 rounds. But before the end of the round, Tom Molino, 
would knock out Tom Cribb. We talked about that story. And Tom Cribb's charge would jump on Tom Molino, claiming it was a foul, claiming he had iron pellets in his fist. He stepped on his hand, hit him with a pipe in the back of his head. And this would give Tom Cribb opportunities to recover. There's many stories like this. Another story with Joe Lashley, they call him the African Black. He fought June 13th, 1843, against Tom Treadway. And unfortunately, with Tom Lashley, he was thrown in hot boiling water because he didn't follow instructions. He was supposed to take somewhat of a dive, take it easy on his foe. Found it too easy to resist. And that's how he was punished. If you look at the movie Mandingo with Kenny Norton and the scene where man was thrown in water, he was basically pushed in water. They showed the scene as he backed up in the water. But that's what happened to a lot of the fighters at that time. And I just wanted to recognize some of the great names in turn of the century. George Maddox, Bill Richmond, the Black Terror, Scrapbook Boxing, behalf of Curtis Anderson, Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series wants to recognize these great black fighters never getting the shine that they deserved. Men such as James Jim Robinson, the Ebony Ph Phenomenon, or the Norky Black. He was born August 8, 1829. He died June 11, 1848, Manchester, England. He stood five foot five inches, weighed 122 to 126 pounds. 1846, he'd be in a ring with Jim Millwood in Manchester. That would be an exhibition. September 8th of 1846, he would take on James Evans, Mally Station. The fight would go 59 rounds. It took 59 minutes to complete. His purse was 50 pounds. 1847, March 9th to be exact. Jim Robinson would find himself in a ring with Johnny Creech Burton. His purse would be 60 pounds. It would go 58 rounds and took 109 minutes to complete. He would win all his fights. Never lost one of them. But you don't know much about him. Thanks for watching. Scrapbook Boxing. Museum of the Forgotten Fistigoff series. All great fights and all great fighters. But never be forgotten on my channel. Sam Robinson, we'll talk about him before we leave. He was born in New York, May 23rd, 1778. He stood six foot, he weighed 190 pounds. He fought 1816, January 11th to be exact, against a fighter by the name of Tom Crockey. Defeated him in seven rounds. March 14th, 1816. Af Butcher, Cloran Warren, took 45 rounds to complete, 47 minutes to be exact. His purse was 10 guineas. Oh, I'm telling you. Harry Sellers, born 1820. He stood 160. Uh, he weighed 160 pounds and he was just a very strong fighter. Born 1858 against Joe Kitchen in Victorian Fields in Australia. He lost in 32 rounds. And he would earn 300 pounds. But that was a brutal contest. Thanks for hanging there with me. Until next time. 100 years of the greatest 150 black fighters of all times. These men will be placed on that list.